Hello everyone, Stucker you here, and welcome back to the History of Everything podcast YouTube channel. My question for you all watching right now is, have you ever heard of the tale of the spies who were executed at the Tower of London? Now mind you, at this time, we're not talking about some kind of James Bond or Tom Clancy or some other kind of spy movie tale or anything like that. No, rather, uh, the entire thing for this story is rather dumb and sad in the first place. But hey, I guess welcome to the History of Everything, and on today's episode, we are going to be talking about the rather unfortunate story of the German spy Karl Hans Lodi. First off, to understand this, we have to go a little bit back in time. The Tower of London as an entity was something that was very important both during World War I and World War II. Like, very important. Whether it served as a training ground for recruits in World War I, or whether it was a prison for Nazi prisoners back during World War II, during each of these conflicts, the Tower would have a kind of role as a military store, as a barracks, and a prison. And, just like in the days of old, it sometimes served as a place for execution of said prisoners. A total of 12 spies were actually executed behind the walls of the tower, but to be honest, it's kind of crazy to think of how it actually happened. You see, kind of like what it is today, the Tower of London by the turn of the 20th century was something that was pretty much just a tourist attraction. But despite that primary role, during the entire time that it was operating as a tourist attraction, it never stopped serving as a military building, either as a warehouse, a training ground, or as a prison. It was that still the entire time. During World War I, it would serve all three purposes while at the same time still being open to visitors to just come in and see it. That, that was just a thing that was done. And that is where our story begins with the, uh, the whole declaration of war. Almost as soon as war began, enemy agents would start to enter Britain for the purpose of espionage. But what is insane about this is the sheer number of them that received little to no training or seemed to have little to no ability in the first place to actually perform said espionage. Most of them were uh, captured very easily. By 1916 in World War I, a total of 11 spies had been captured and then subsequently executed within the Tower of London. The first of which is the subject of today's story, Karl Hans Lodi. You see, Lodi, who was a German naval officer, had arrived in Britain at the outbreak of the war in the summer of 1914. There, he was part of a network of spies that were being sent to strategic locations all around the country for the purpose of spying and gaining information. Being a person who could speak fluent English, he went ahead and posed himself as an American, moving up to Scotland to try and spy at Rolseth in order to identify a series of warships there that could potentially be a threat to the German Navy. Being a fluent English speaker, you might think that everything would be okay, but the reality was that Lodi felt very uneasy about this assignment. In his own words, he was not a fit man for that kind of job. Which, okay, if you're going to want to grant his personality some issues that maybe he didn't cut himself out to be spy material, that's fine. But he still was a fluent English speaker, so that is something that at least would work to the Germans' advantage, right? Well, here's the thing. Lodi was not exactly a unrecognizable person. He was actually well known to quite a number of people internationally because prior to the war, he had helped to escort ships along the Hamburg America shipping line. That is um, really not a great way to start out this mission, but it gets worse. Lodi was given essentially no kind of formal training whatsoever, and so he was completely unprepared for a life of espionage. His true identity was almost immediately uncovered, and then he was subsequently captured and brought back to London to be tried by court-martial. Lodi's court-martial would take place in the Middlesex Guildhall in Westminster on the 30th of October, and would last only until the 2nd of November, 1914. During the entire thing, it is said that Lodi looked more like a clerk than an actual spy. He just really didn't have that air about him. Over the course of the trial, witnesses were called to testify, and to be honest, the results were just comical. As an example of this, you have the elderly proprietress of the Edinburgh boarding house. This is the place where Lodi had stayed while there, and the ironic thing is she found it very difficult to identify Lodi, and so he had gone and stood up in the dock and waved his hands in order to attract her attention. Something that I, I genuinely can't believe that that happened, but he, as a result, would break out into laughter over the situation that he found himself in. As another example, when the court asked him who sent you to England, he went pale and hesitated, and then because he gave his word of honor, he just refused to answer. Like nothing whatsoever was working in this guy's favor, and at the end of it, at the end of the trial, he was sentenced to death. After this conviction, the Major of the Tower of London was then informed that there was a very short amount of time that they had to prepare and secretly carry out the sentence. The War Office approved the Tower of London as the location where Lodi was to be executed, and the date was set for the morning of the 6th of November, 1914. Three days later, Lodi was taken to the Tower. Convicted and condemned, he then went and wrote a letter to the commanding officer of the 3rd Battalion of the Grenadier Guards, expressing his, quote, sincere thanks and appreciation towards the staff of officers and men who had treated him kindly during his imprisonment at the Wellington Barracks. 
In another letter, a final one to his family, he wrote, My dear ones, tomorrow I shall be shot here in the tower. I've had just judges, and I shall die as an officer, not as a spy. Farewell, and God bless you, Hans. On the morning of the execution, as Lodi was being led away from his cell by an officer, he had turned to the officer and said, I suppose that you will not shake hands with the German spy. Amazingly, that officer had turned back and responded, No, but I will shake hands with a brave man. The tower chaplain read the burial service, leading a calm and composed Lodi through the tower, while armed escorts and the guards who were to carry out his sentence followed behind. At this point in the story, everything should be rather somber, but there is one final detail in here that just shows the kind of man that Lodi was. You see, there was this human goaler by the name of John Frazier who had witnessed the execution, and in his writings later, he would talk about the final moments that Lodi had had before his execution. He said, quote, The chaplain, in his nervousness, made to turn left, which was in fact the wrong way. Instantly, Lodi took a quick step forward, caught the chaplain by the right arm, and with a polite and kindly smile, gently guided him to the right, the correct way. A few moments later, the procession disappeared through the doorway of the sinister shed, and shortly after came the muffled sound of a single volley of shots. Even in his last moments, Lodi had no real wish to delay the sentencing. He knew exactly what was coming, he had accepted his fate, and he approached it with a sense of, I don't even know how to describe it, mirth, acceptance, Understanding would probably be the closest thing. I can't even imagine what it would be like at that point to be in his shoes. But remember what we talked about with the tower being open over the course of the wars? That very same day that Lodi was executed, later the tower was open to visitors. People who had no idea of what had just taken place that morning. During his trial, Lodi had written to a friend that his body would be placed in the concrete beneath the old tower. But in fact, Lodi had instead been buried in an unmarked common grave in the East London Cemetery. Sometime after the war, the War Graves Commission would erect a wooden cross on Lodi's grave, and his family would add a white headstone. The headstone would be subsequently destroyed by bombing during World War II, but was then replaced by relatives in 1974. The War Graves Commission and the German Embassy would go on to create a memorial for German civilians buried in the cemetery, including the other spies that would later be executed at the tower. A small stone now marks their resting place. But that, in the end, is the end of the story of Karl Hans Lodi the first spy to be executed over the course of the world wars in Britain. But everyone, this has been Sakuyi with the History of Everything, and thank you very much for watching. I ask that you like, that you comment, that you subscribe, that you do everything you can to help support this video and the algorithm. If you'd like to support this channel further, you can please check out the links in my description. I have a Patreon that you can check out, and I simultaneously have my own coffee that you could go ahead and purchase because I promise you that it is something very tasty. Either way, any way that you decide to join, I really appreciate all of you, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you everyone for watching, and goodbye.